Okay, so let's get started. So first, again, I do want to say thank you guys so very much for joining. I do appreciate that you have taken some time out of your Saturday to listen to this information session. And I'm not going to take too much of your time, but I do want to make sure that you have all the necessary information that you need. And at the end, I'm going to allow everyone to talk and ask questions or type questions if that's better for you. All right, let's get started. So a quick note on IT audit. Um, I'm going to talk through um, a little bit about IT auditing before I talk about the actual course itself. Um, a lot of you on the call today, I'm going to assume you know something about IT audit, so I'm not going to go into in-depth details. If you want a little bit more, I have a free mini course you can take on my website, the courses website. Um, but just in general, if you look at the screen, uh, this is what is a formal definition of IT audit, an examination of IT systems and all of that. But in layman terms, if I'm just going to talk to you, it's really an examination of all the controls in an IT system. And those controls are evaluated for effectiveness. What does that mean? That you are evaluating the controls in the system to determine if they are working the way they are supposed to be. And um, if they are addressing any minimum compliance requirements, if, for example, think about it as an IRS audit for those in the U.S., or even if you're not, if you ever have a tax audit in your um, country of origin, they are looking to make sure that you have filed your taxes the right way. So the same way an IT audit is to check the system and the controls around it to determine if um, the things, uh, the controls are effective in preventing any of the items that they want to prevent. There are many types of IT audits. Um, you have internal, external audits. Some are for like Sarbanes-Oxley. You have some for PCI. You have security audits that are specific to just like security from a security perspective or vulnerability management. So there's a lot of room for, for growth is what I want to share there. So when you say IT audits, it doesn't mean you're doing the exact same thing every time. There's a very wide range of things that can be taught in IT audits. Yes, Mr. Coyote, you raised your hand. You have a question? Can you type it, please? If you can type your question, I'll take a look at it in a minute once I see it typed, and then I'll answer it. And the last point I want to make on this slide is that IT audits or any audits, they don't provide complete assurance over everything. They only provide reasonable assurance because there's always things that you can't account for. Okay, thank you. So financial audit is specific to the finance area. Yes, that's the question you had, Mr. Kaide. It is um, specific to the finances of the organization and IT audits actually support financial audits. So whenever someone is doing an IT audit, they would actually, uh, whenever there's a financial audit rather, there's typically an IT audit that has to take place because accounting systems are computer systems. So IT auditors need to come in and check those accounting systems first before the accountants actually come in to check the data. And that's actually one part of my course, the larger course that I'm gonna talk about later that I cover specifically how IT audits are used in financial audits. So hope that answered your question. So again, just going back to the last point here, which is uh, IT audits, uh, they don't provide complete assurance. So you always, in any language you use, say it gives reasonable assurance because there's always something you don't know of. So somebody in the back end may be performing actions they can't, they, sh they shouldn't, or maybe a system goes down or something like that. So you never want to say that um, an IT audit is giving complete foolproof assurance. No, that's not how it works. So this is just a little bit about IT auditing. Again, my three course uh, mini course has a little bit more on that. Okay, so let's talk about when you're an IT auditor. Um, someone is asking the different types of IT audits. There are many types. Um, I mentioned some before. There's internal audits. There's external. There's IT for financial. You have operational audits. You have Sarbanes Oxley. You can have PCI, uh, security audits, vulnerability management. There's a ton of those. So I can't go through all of them here. I go through some of them in this larger course I'm going to talk about. But there's a there's different audits based on the goal of the audit uh, is what I was saying. So thanks. I'm not sure who G1 is, but I hope that answered your question. So when you're thinking about being an IT auditor, what are the kind of things that you're going that you're going to do? 
Uh, one, you perform various type of audits, like I just talked about. And some of the audits might be for compliance efforts, or some might just be operational to see if the IT audit teams or the IT teams rather are doing the things that they should do. So that's where your primary your primary objective would be to, or responsibility would be to perform the different types of audits. And then you also become kind of like a project manager. In the audit world, they typically call it engagement. So if they say engagement or project is the same thing. But when you start off your career, you may not do a lot of project management, but your little aspect of it, you will be responsible for managing it, scheduling meetings and making sure your work is done and all of that. So you need to have a little bit of project management skills, not formally, but you need to be an organized person is what I'll say. Um, the third thing here is you need to be able to document results of testing. And that means uh, whenever you perform testing, you have to document it so that somebody else can look at your testing and understand what you did and how you got to your results. I'll be honest with you, IT audit jobs is probably 50 or 60% documentation from my perspective, because you get all your evidence, you test, and then you have to spend more time actually documenting it for other people to make sense of what you did. The th uh, next item on here is you have to communicate your testing results. So once you're done testing, you have to go back to the teams that you tested, or maybe you go through your manager, depending on your level, to communicate those testing results. Because they may not understand all the technical speak. You have to be able to convert that to English for them, to business language, to let them understand what you found um, in your um, particular audit that you performed. And then the last thing is to write reports. Again, when you start, you may not write the reports, your manager may be, but you will give input to those reports. So the report is actually what goes to management. Management doesn't want all the detailed testing. Management wants to see the summary of your results. What did you test as a summary? What are the weak areas for the company? What are the areas that the company needs to improve for that particular area? So writing reports is something that you do. And honestly, I spent, when I was a manager, I spent most of my time writing reports because they're very detailed and you have a large business type audience. So this is just hopefully to give you guys some ideas about things that you would do as an IT auditor. Next, I'm going to talk about some skills that you would need to be an IT auditor, okay? So you need to have an analytical mind. An IT auditor, you'll be looking at a lot of data. You may need to use tools like Excel um, to analyze data. So you would need to use uh, have an analytical mind. You can't just take information and just say that's it. You have to be able to translate that information for it to make meaning um, to, to you and to the uh, customer or your clients that you're working with. So that's a skill that you actually need. Uh, you have to be inquisitive. You always have to ask why. You know, the IT people, they, nobody likes audits. If you've ever been audited, nobody wants to be audited. So they may not always give you full information. So you have to be the person that's inquisitive asking, why is it set up this way? Why is this correct? You don't just take their answer for yes. So you have to be an inquisitive person. You also have to have people skills. Because like I said, nobody wants to be audited. So what does that mean? It means most times people are cranky when you show up. <laughs> so you have to have some level of emotional intelligence to be able to just work with people to get them on board to helping you. And it's something I practice a lot at KPMG where even sometimes the client is happy for me to come, even though they are not happy for the engagement or the audit, because they know I treat them well and I you know, listen to them and understand their concerns before I do my work. And you have to also have a consulting mindset. You're not the person that would just go in and say, yeah, all your problems and that's it. You have to also start thinking about what are some of the ways they can solve the problems. Now, this depends on the audit. You really can't do that for external audits, but if you're an internal audit or you are in a role that's supposed to be helping out, then you have to think beyond the problem you see in the audit to think about how you will actually solve the problem for them. So that's one way, uh, one skill that you need. And then the last skill is you, you need to be trusting of your clients or whoever you're testing, but then you still have to verify. So in the audit world, you hear trust but verify. You don't want to go in there saying, oh, I know you're going to lie to me. No, you trust the information, but you always ask them to verify because that's your job. Your job is to check and test that they are truly doing what they said they do or that they're supposed to do. 
So you always need to verify any information that you get. If you're someone that's always so trusting that you don't ask more questions or get more evidence, it's something that you need to develop, even if it makes you feel uncomfortable asking follow-up questions or asking for verification, you need to develop that skill set, okay? So I hope that helps you in thinking through some of the skills you need for IT audit. Again, if you have any questions, please type it. I will, I'm taking a look at the chat to make sure that I answer any questions. So let's talk about some of the job outlook uh, items for IT audit. Um, I went to the Bureau of Labor and Statistics and IT jobs in general, anyway in IT, it's growing. If you guys can see on the screen, it's supposed to grow about 11% over the next 10 or so years, over 500,000 new jobs. And you can see that IT jobs on average have higher salaries than other jobs. Like if you look, you see here, other jobs have a median wage of 39,000. IT is over 88,000. So IT in general, if you're thinking of a career, IT in general is one that uh, is growing. And it's something that I encourage everyone that I know that's looking into careers to consider. And then for IT auditor salaries, you can see this chart here. I got this from ZipRecruiter. You can look at other you know, job websites, but they'll give you around the same range. So there's a range, right? You have the lower end to the higher end, but on average for someone that you know, has a decent amount of experience or training or things like that, depending on your role, it's, it's about 93,000. So it's not a bad job at all. Um, it's some, and it's something that you can grow in. So the more skills you learn, the more technology you learn, you can definitely leverage that to make more money. So I would say um, IT jobs, IT audit specifically, definitely uh, a, a field to look into. And even more than that, I recently went to one of the job sites. I can't remember if it was simple, uh, simply hired or uh, indeed.com. And I just typed in IT audit jobs and thousands of jobs came up. So that tells me that there's a lot of jobs out there. I'm not guaranteeing anybody a job, of course, because I don't have any jobs to, you know, a, a company that's employing. But looking out there, there are many companies that are hiring for IT audit jobs. Okay, so now um, the next few minutes, I'm going to just talk a little bit about why I think you should consider an IT audit career. Um, like I mentioned just recently or in the last slide, it's an in-demand field. There's always, always a need for that. Someone asked about financial audits earlier. And because financial audits are things that companies must do, um, at least in the US, they always have to have that. Uh, I know other countries do too. They are supported by IT auditors. As I mentioned earlier, IT auditors need to come in first to test the system before the accountants and the financial auditors come in to do their work. Because that's actually what tells those accountants that they can trust the numbers. For example, if an IT system is not secure and anybody can enter information into the balance sheet, the auditors or the financial auditors cannot trust that data. So they will need to perform a different type of test for their audit. So IT auditors are very important uh, in various aspects of business, including financial audits. So it's in demand. Um, I would say you have the uh, ability to impact and also provide value to clients. So that's another reason which you should consider. So if you're someone that likes to add value wherever you go, then IT audit is something you should consider. Um, it's not boring. You, you, there are different types of projects. So today you may work on SOCs, tomorrow might be PCI, then you might have an operational audit. Um, if you're in consulting, different clients, large clients, small clients. So it's not boring. Uh, for me, I never found it boring. So I, I think for people that like, you know, a sense of change, then definitely something to look into. And it has visibility. So when you're performing IT audits, you perform IT audits for different groups in an organization. So what that does is it actually gives you visibility into the different parts of an organization. And many people I know end up working in some of those groups when they get tired of IT audits because they already have visibility into how those departments work. It gives them that ability to actually go in and apply for a job in that department. And they're usually hired because they know they know their stuff already. 
So this one is actually a very, very good um, um, reason. Um, you also learn different technologies because that's how I got into software development because I did you know, a lot of IT audits for some software and some consulting work. And I decided to develop in that area just because I knew a lot about it. So it, it gives opens you up to different opportunities. And which is the last point, because you have limitless possibilities for future career options. I started out as a hardcore IT auditor, and then I moved more into management consulting. Uh, and then I now do software development in the GRC space and project management. And I still do my IT audit training. So there's just a lot of opportunities out there for you in the IT audit area. Okay. So now I'm going to go into the course because I know that's what some of you are here for. But I just wanted to give you guys a background on IT audits first before going into more of the course information. Okay, how do you compare working in a financial setting and a private? I think it's different. Um, if you're in a private company that's not consulting, um, you're working for just one company and you're working for different departments in that company. Whereas if you're working with a consulting firm, I'm, I'm going to assume that's what your question is, you get different clients. So today I might be working at Citigroup and next week I'm working at a, a, another oil and gas company, depending on you know, the companies you're working for. So you work for different companies, whereas when you're in the same company, you're working for the different departments with that company. I will say that consulting gives you overall more experience because you do a lot more different types of work. So probably one year in consulting is equivalent to two or three years in uh, regular industry. So that's just something to think about. 